and a, a, a bottle of oil and stuff like that, and then a little tape, and then you read that tape, and most of the tape is talking about raising money. That's what it's talking about raising money. If you give here, if you give, talking about raising money, no word or nothing to help your character. People, the Lord didn't come for that. The Lord came to perfect, and you, re, you rebellious. I mean, in your spirit, you rebellious folk in you. You got you, the look of rebellion. Your day coming. The Lord going to judge you. You being judged already. And then you self-righteous ap apostles and prophets and prophetess and all that kind of mess that you got a word in you. But then you ought to tell it. I'm doing it. <laughs> and I'm telling the truth. That's right. I ain't backing down from nobody. I know who called me. And I'm, I was called to preach the truth. Whether you like it or don't like it, read your Bible for yourself. And those of you that rise up against the truth, let me tell you what the one with the last word said. You can't do nothing against it. So you can throw your hands up. You can play. You can, you can holler. And you can, you, when, when y'all leave here, y'all can, in the parking lot, but don't stay out there too long. <laughs> Whatever you want to do. Let me tell you something. I found out about demons and devils. Like Paul says, demons and devils, they will never try to do nothing openly. They always got to do something underhand. When you tell the truth, you, Jesus said, whatever I told you, it was. And what I tell you, if you don't believe, if you think uh, you're the only one that the Lord used me to tell, tune in on Saturdays. Tune in, go on Facebook and see. Oh, I'm not, no, no, no. I got a calling. And somebody called me. And the person that called me has the last word. In other words, you don't. You don't have the last word. And I advise you to come to a place of real life. You don't have the last word. Every one of you going to leave here one day. And you're going to give an account to the person that has the last word. And it ain't you. It's not you. I don't care how many folk like you. I don't care how many folk you deceive. You, I don't care how many folk you flatter. You don't have the last word. And when a person realizes that, it will humble you. Lord Jesus. And then it takes that fear from you where you ain't afraid of man. I'm not afraid of folk. That's why if I was, I'd be just like some of you. Don't say nothing. Ball up, messed up. You know, I should have said, no, I ain't going to. I should have said. I'm just going to say it. If the Lord tell me to say it, it's wrong. I'm going to say it. You know, you need help. And I'm going to say to all of us in here, all of us need help. And we need help from the one who got the last word. So what I gave you is the last word. Well, the, read it for yourself. He said, my word would not return to me for everything the Lord said, he's going to do it. And what, you know what? He don't lie. Some folk will lie. Some folk will make promises and don't show up. The Lord is going to show up. Matter of fact, I heard he said, I'm not slacking my promise. Some of you think he is. But I'm long suffering. And I'm willing that nobody perish but come to repentance. But there's a day when repentance is not going to be allowed. It's going to be over. That's the day of judgment. And what I like about it is the word. When God come back, you know what God going to do? God going to judge everybody by the word. That's what he going to do. Solemn non Jesus. Oh, if you if you say you saved, and somebody walk around saying they saved and don't believe in Jesus, and then you say, Well, I wonder are you saved? You need to go back to school. You, you need to go back to the cross. And then those of you that are afraid when people say you judging, so what? I'm a judge angels. And when the ones that Tell me you judging. I said, well, I see you ain't. <laughs> you won't be judging angels. Why? Because if you can't judge the smallest matter here, that's the word. Folk try to lock you down. Why? Because they don't want the truth out. They want the truth out. And then this thing, you got to love everybody. That's right. That's right. You're supposed to love everybody. Well, how you do it? Tell the truth. Tell the truth. 
I don't argue with people and say, well, you're supposed to love everybody. I do. That's why I do Ephesians 4.15. I love everybody. No, I'm going to tell you the word. And folk, it's a blessing. And then you can go home. <laughs> and you can rest in peace. I said go home and rest in peace. I'm not talking about it something great. Do you understand? You can rest in peace. But let me tell you something. A lot of them signs out there saying rest in peace. I don't know where. Well, I do know where this comes from. It been down through generation and generation. People done lied and covered up for each other, promoted their traditions over the word of God, and now they done got to a place now. They're being shown up. They're being found out. And you know what? It's the Lord that is exposing them. Why? Because the purpose of the gospel is to uncover the hidden works of dishonesty. The purpose of the gospel, you read your Bible in 2 Corinthians 10. It says to, to uncover the hidden works of God, to pull a cover off to let y'all see. So, those of you that want to follow tradition and go to hell, sell on. Those of you that don't want to follow the truth, rise on. Because you're going to rise on. You're going to rise up. That's why these folk ain't got no power. People are dying all over the place. Disease and stuff running rampant. Why? People don't, they don't go to the word anymore. They do not go to the word. And those of you that sit in here, old and young, that don't read your Bible, what you can tell folk? Well, why you try to do it? Well, then some of you don't even do it, do you? And my Bible tells me, and wait a minute, listen to this now. The scripture says this, that we are born again so we can receive a ministry or reconciliation to reconcile the world. That's what my Bible says now. It's in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 in my Bible. I can't give you the exact page, but I can tell you where it's at. And it should be in your Bible too. And it talks about the saved. From verse 17 to 20 or 21, it talks about if you are a new creature, old things are passed away, all things become new, and all things are of God. For the what purpose? So he can reconcile you. Okay, so you're going to tell me you're a Christian, but you don't have a desire to minister to the lost. What happened to that scripture? Look at it for yourself. What happened to that scripture? And folk done got to a place now, just because so-and-so ain't doing it, it must be all right. <laughs> folk, what's wrong with people is they don't want to do what's right. They don't want to read the word, and then they want to shut up those that's telling the truth and what's right. The problem in that is this. <clears throat> they didn't make their mouth. Because <laughs> see, when you shut one of us up, the Lord going to raise up seven more. And let me tell you, it's amazing how when you leave here, you run into somebody else down the road that's saying the same thing. Or you, when you go to the woods, you're running somebody in the woods. Folk, the Lord knows what to do. People, there is a God. There's a Jesus Christ. There's a Jesus Christ, folk. And I pray to God that those of you that's not saving here come to a place of realizing save means you can change. And if you are saved, you always have a hunger for the truth. You always have a hunger for the truth. And you won't find yourself resisting or fighting against the truth. Those of you that fight against the truth, your days are numbered. Your days are numbered. And the devil can't tell you when your days are numbered. If you're going to work for him, he ought to at least tell you something. He ought to tell you how long you're going to be employed. <laughs> you know? I mean, if you're going to work for him, 
get some information, sit down and talk with him. You know, get out and talk, find out, you know, how long, wait a minute now, how long this camaraderie go go on between me and you? How long this thing, I mean, if you're going to work for the devil, won't you call on him and find out how long is this going to last? You know, is this long term? <laughs> Tell him you tired of working for Tip Agency. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. I want something long. If you're going to work for them, tell them you want for something long term. Yeah, I'm tired of these tip agents. Every week you send to me this some other problem. I'm tired of this. If you're going to work for the devil, you ought to have some kind of contract where you can benefit. <laughs> I mean, if you're going to at least for a while, you know it ain't going to last. It's amazing. I'm just trying to help y'all. Those of you that's religious and messed up, we're trying to help you to see that you're religious and messed up. That's why you think that way. Because the righteous think about the Lord. And you know, it said they shall see God. Oh, Lord God. That gives me joy and peace. That gives, Lord, if I stay in your word, if I walk out your word, if I obey your word, if I do what your word says, I'm going to see Jesus in the right way. Because everybody's going to see him now. <laughs> Even though you don't want to see him, you're going to see him. You, you, and you know what Jesus is going Jesus to do? He's going to show himself strong. Jesus ain't no child no more, folks. He ain't no manger. Jesus is strong. And he don't take no junk from nobody. And if you don't believe me, ask your master if he's the devil. He put a whooping on the devil. And Jesus whooped the devil, so the devil didn't realize he was whooping to after the match was over. <laughs> you know, when you're in the rain boxing and you get knocked out, <laughs> that's right, you don't realize the match is over until you come through. <laughs> you be, you either be in the back room, there they give you smelling salt, where, where am I? You be trying to get up and hit. They done took your gloves off. You don't realize? Wait, what happened? What out? What out? <laughs> hey, you got knocked out. What you mean I got knocked out? You got flow. <laughs> you hit the flow and you didn't get back up. Oh, come on, folk. It's time to live for Jesus. Stop letting these religious folk back you now. Ain't got no word in them. No Jesus. And you know the truth. And you're too afraid to stand up and try to help them. I don't want to hurt they feel. If you don't want to hurt folk feeling, you can't work for God. Because that's why Jesus came. Jesus came to stop these feelings, to put a stop to them. Because feeling, your emotion gets you to hell. He wants you to walk in faith. That's right. Jesus, Lord Jesus. I'm happy. I am just happy because I'm delivered and I can tell folk the truth. And I enjoy telling folk the truth. No matter how dangerous it might get, I'm going to still tell folk. Oh, God. Folk, it's a blessing to be saved. It's a blessing to be saved. It's a you come into a ministry that don't celebrate no Christmas tree, that don't celebrate no Easter bunny, that tells you the whole truth, that don't celebrate no Sabbath day, I want you to listen to this. First Corinthians chapter 16. Put that on the screen. Then we're going we're gonna it's folks, don't don't talk about it. now back in Paul's day they didn't have microwaves. I want to hear Paul preach. Well then you better bring your picnic basket. <laughs> Cause there'll be no lunch break. <laughs> Do you understand? I want you to listen to this. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 16. Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye, keep going, upon the, upon the what? 
upon the what? First day of the week. Make sure you tell that seven day event. <laughs> upon the first day of the week. Now that's in the Bible. Yeah. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay up by him in store as God has prospered him. It's, guess what he's talking about? Money. M O N E. It says, upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store as God has. As God has prospered him, that there may be no gathering when I come. In other words, to be a cheerful giver, you don't wait till the last minute. <laughs> That's to be a cheerful. Now, we ain't finished yet. We're going to go back to Genesis and show y'all that tithes was not under the law again. And we're going to go to Matthew and show you what Jesus said about tithes and then we go into Hebrews to confirm what the Holy Spirit said about tithes and offering. That's what we're going to do. We done done it before we're going to do it again. That's right. A lot of people think tithes and offering was under the law. It wasn't. Tithes and offering was not under. Abraham was not under the law. And Abraham paid tithes. So a lot of, but you know why? Because folks don't realize it's the Lord that bless you. And I guarantee you this. I will be more blessed than you because I pay my tithes and give an offering than you that don't. The Bible guaranteed me that. It guaranteed me. I know y'all, some of y'all show you think you can do more math than the Lord. You think you can, your figures, your figures are come out more, but then look at your life. Just take a good look at your life. <laughs> Glory, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> when you live all your life and you haven't lived for Jesus, you're going to pay the price. That's what you're going to do. You're going to pay the price. You can sit there and you can come up with everything you want to come. Every theory. Everybody can pat you on, back, on the back. But there's only one person I won't pat me on my back. And he's telling me to come on in, son. I'm going to spend my life serving the Lord. I'm going to spend my life pointing to Jesus pointing people to Jesus and to the truth and encouraging people to read your Bible. It doesn't matter whether people hear it or not. I want them to hear it. But my ministry is not based on whether people hear it. You know why? Because the Lord told me to do it when they want to hear it and do it when they So my ministry is not based on whether people want to hear it. It's based on whether the Lord wants me to speak it. Because I know who got the last word. I know who got the last word. It ain't me, and it's showing you. It just ain't you. It ain't, it is not. It aren't. <laughs> it, will, it never have been. Never will be. <laughs> so my job is to help y'all see Jesus. And then rise up in confidence in the truth. All this word, you ought to be full of the truth. And folks, let me tell you something. Paul, Paul, Paul would argue with people in the Bible. And then when those refused to believe, you know what he did? He took the disciple with him. He said, y'all come, he separate. Y'all come, don't hang around with no more believers. He had taken with him. Y'all come with me. Don't y'all follow them. Why? Paul understood that devils produce devils. He understood that. That's what devils do. They're good at doing that. 
devils produce devils. That's right. And you know what? I love to stand in front, not only just Christians, I love to stand in front of devils and tell devils that they defeated. Tell devils where you going. All of you that do not have a love for the truth, you are going to H-E-L-L to visit. <laughs> you are going to hell to visit. Yes, you are. Yes, they are going to hell to visit. You ain't going to be in hell all your life because the Lord going to bring you back up to hell. And he's going to give you a larger compartment called the lake of fire. And there you will spend eternity with the devil and all of his angels. All your buddies and your friends that walk with you and agree with you and just yoked up with you. But the thing about it, there's no tables for chairs to sit there. There will be only. You know, you won't have time to sit. <laughs> you won't have time. There will be no, you can't eat. Y'all hungry now. Some of, I know, I know, I know you're hungry. That means you can't, there's no, people, there's no chicken. There's no steak. People, why you want to go to hell? There's nothing like that. There's no barbecue. There's no, there's no fish. There's not even soup in hell, folks. So why you want to go to hell? There's not even water in hell. So why would a person want to go to hell? It's got to be devilish, demonic. That's right. When Jesus came, and all you got to do is follow Jesus and go to heaven. And that's why nowhere in the Bible does it say there's going to be a banquet in hell. Nowhere in the Bible does it say you're going to eat in hell. But it says in heaven, the Lord is going to prepare a banquet. Oh, Jesus. You're talking about some real food. Some real spiritual food with some spiritual flavor. Oh, Jesus. Lord Jesus. Jesus. Oh, God. And some, you know, sometimes something be so good, you don't want to get full. You know, it be so good, you just don't want to get full. It be so good, you, you don't want to get full. I wonder, can we do that in heaven? When we get to heaven, you know, we can eat and just eat and, and then it not show. Eat and eat. <laughs> oh, that's the truth. I told you I'm gonna tell the whole truth. I'm gonna tell the whole truth. You know, I mean, just eat, man. But you understand this: on heaven, it's gonna be that same way. In hell, on the earth here, it's gonna be the same way. There's no wicked going to be in there. There will be no marijuana plants. There will be no Jack Daniels up a Carteron. There will be no wicked. There will be banks because life is going to go on. There'll just be no wicked. Have you ever thought that you can sit down and there's no wicked? There's nobody to do you evil? Have you ever thought about the earth going to be like that? It is. No evil at all. None. All the evil folk are gone. It's just the Lord's folk. And Jesus is going to be over there in Jerusalem. Have you ever thought about that? Lord Jesus, just the righteous. Man, just the righteous, folks. Just the righteous. What kind of... Man, when everybody, somebody come out to do how did they mean it? Jeez. Can you, can you imagine the earth being like that? Well, 
let me tell you this. You don't have to imagine. It's going to be like that. It's going to be like that. It's going to be. There will be no Beyonce's. There, there, there will be no, there, no wicked at all. We will be completely changed. Wow. I wonder what kind of basketball. How that would work. Because you know Jesus ate. We're going to have the same body Jesus had. Jesus was able to walk through walls. We're going to be like him. That's why the scripture says, even as he is now, so are we in this world. We're going to be, our body going to be like Jesus. So he ate. Man. I wonder how that will work, because I guess when you play basketball, it will be science and no flying. Absolutely no flying. That's all. There has to be a limit. No flying. No, no, no. No flying at all. No. No flying at all. No flying at all. Only so many, maybe a foot off the ground, that's it. You ain't no. Have y'all thought of that? Because let me tell you, look, when God created Adam, God created Adam for everybody to live righteous. So it don't mean that there wouldn't be basketball games or football games. It don't mean that. The things, the people going to work on the earth. There are going to be jobs on the earth, down here on the earth. People going to be living like they supposed God created the earth for men. It just won't be no wicked. And then we won't be handicapped with this flesh. We'll be able to do things that the, you think Adam did something. He named every animal. There, there will be schools, but the teachers will be righteous. They'll be teaching the students right. All of that's supposed to go. None of that's going to stop. It's just going to be done the right way. It's going to be done the right way. Can you, can you admit, the earth's going to be like that. People, angels are not going to live on the earth. The earth was not made for angels. The earth was made for human beings. So those that come back that the Lord assigned to the earth, they're going to be in charge. Like Peter, you know, they're going to be in charge of the earth. Jesus is going to be in charge of every human being on this earth, out of Judah. So can you imagine where... Man, okay, everybody going to be not nice, but righteous. And have loving kindness, like God. Man, can you imagine when nobody hates you? Nobody talk about you? Everybody glad to see you? Can you imagine... That's what's going to happen in the earth. That's what's going to take place in the earth, folks. It's going to be like that. Where your neighbor is going to really be your neighbor. Jesus. Lord Jesus. Children going to grow up with each other. Helping and loving each other. Because that's what the adults do. That's what kind of... The Lord going to get all this other stuff out. He going to cleanse it. And then they're going to redo the earth. And then the earth is going to be repopulated again. Lord Jesus. With the right people. How you know? The meek shall. That's what the last word says. Every head bow. That's why I'm happy. That's why I'm going to stand on this truth. I'm going to stand on this word. I'm going to stand on this word. This word here is righteous. It's right today. If you're not saved, if you're wrestling with the truth, you need to be delivered. You need Jesus. That's what you need. You need the Lord. Because only the truth will make you free. And the 
truth is not compromised. It's not flowered or watered down. The truth is the truth. That's it. Whether you agree with it or not, it is the truth. And I thank the Lord for the truth. I thank the Lord for the truth. And the only way people can be free is by the truth. And the truth was not sent by man. It was sent by God through Jesus, the Christ. Today, if you have a problem with the truth, you need to be real with you. You need to be truthful with yourself. <laughs> if you have a problem with the truth, you need deliverance. If you have a problem with the word of the Lord, you need deliverance. You need deliverance. And if I was you, while I can, I ask the Lord to deliver me. Help me, Lord. Because I know who got the last word, and it's not me. So today, if you want to be saved, raise your hand right now. If you want to be delivered, raise your hand right now. If you want the truth, raise your hand right now, and you can be saved. If you have a, a seriously, you need to really examine yourself, because we want all of you to go to heaven. If you have a problem with the truth, if you have a problem with the truth, we're here to help you. The truth will make you free. Not your tradition, not religion, but the truth will make you free. And if you want to be delivered, where well, you can just love the truth, whatever the word says, Lord, mold and shape, you can be delivered right now by raising your hand. That's how we're going to get to heaven. By having a love for the truth. That's it. Just a love for the truth. Lord, tell me the truth. Help me, Lord. Because I don't have the last word. I don't have the last word. Lord, I just want the truth. The truth is going to make you free. Last time. And those of you that have a love for the truth, don't let nobody take that from you. Don't let nobody deceive you and lie to you and you fall for it. That's, that's, that's foolish. That is foolish. There are people out there that will tell you lies, twist they to get you to believe it. And all you got to do is ask for the truth. Lord Jesus stay with the truth stay with the word of the Lord and the Lord will stay with you he will definitely stay with you in these last days we're in a battle church and the battle is against the truth thank you Lord Lord Jesus, as I pray in your mighty name, I thank you for the truth. I thank you for telling us the truth. I thank you, Lord, that nobody can do anything against the truth. And I pray for this body. I pray for all Christians throughout the world, throughout this earth, that have a hunger and a thirst for the truth that you would help them to stand on the truth and help them to see because of your truth. Help them to see the deception that's taking place in the earth. I pray that you would continue to guide us in all truth so we can continue to please you, Lord Jesus. Help us to see even greater your will and your way by your word. And Lord, I thank you. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for letting us know the truth. I thank you for showing us us for the purpose of helping us to be like you. And you said, even in your word, that you got the last word, that all of us will be judged by your word, Lord Jesus. So we ask that you will continue to help us to be conformed to your word. Who like it or who don't like it, we, it don't matter. What matters is we be like you. And 
we don't have the ability to be like you except you help us to be like you except you empower us for we understand that it's in you that we live and move and have our being and Lord Jesus we don't want to go to hell we know there's a hell we want to go to heaven and the only way we can get there is through you because you're the way the truth and the life so Lord we call on you we depending on you we're asking you to help us and to keep your angels around us to protect us you see how wicked the world is? You see how angry and devilish people can be because of the truth. But the Lord, even that's not stopping us. As long as we know you are a shield and our buckle, that you are a high tower, as long as we know that you are watching and keeping us and not allowing the enemy to overtake us, but keeping him on our feet. So Jesus, as I pray in your name today, I want you to know that we thank you for the truth. We really thank you for the truth of the word. Help us to form to your word, to walk in your word each and every day of our lives. Give us a greater desire for your truth, for it's the truth that keeps us free. And Lord, we honor you. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for telling us the truth. We thank you for letting us know about the truth so we can have an opportunity to walk in this truth. Our hope and our trust and our faith is in you, Jesus, and in your word. And Lord, we give you all the glory, the honor, and praise for giving us the right to follow peace, to pursue joy in this life. Thank you, Lord. All glory and honor belongs to you, Jesus. Everything we have belongs to you, Jesus. Lord, we bless your name. Thank you, Jesus, for putting the words in our heart. Thank you, Jesus, for letting us know we can depend on you and you alone. Jesus, there's nobody like you, Jesus. Really, nobody like you, Jesus. And Lord God, we thank you for sending Jesus, the Christ. Thank you, Lord, for giving us that revelation that we understand that your son, Jesus, <laughs> your mighty son, Je your glorious son, Jesus, Lord God, <laughs> is the Christ. And that he is absolutely the only Savior, the only Savior, Jesus. Lord Jesus, what a mighty God we serve. Lord Jesus, full of the truth. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God. Thank you, Lord. Someone we can depend on all the time. And we give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise, Jesus. In your name we pray. And we thank you. And I heard you say, if God is for us, who can be against us? Thank you, Lord. Nobody. Nobody at all. Nobody in prosper, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Glorify yourself in us for the rest of our lives. Not just today, but for the rest of our lives. In your name we pray, Jesus, and we thank you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Lord Jesus. Lord, I thank the Lord. I thank the Lord I believe this way. Jesus. We're going to lift our tithes and offerings. I really thank the Lord I believe this way because there was a time I didn't believe this. Ain't no way in the world you could have got me to believe this. I, I would, you know what? And I would be telling you some choice words. <laughs> but now I can tell you some real choice words. Some godly words. And that is Jesus is the Christ. Jesus is my Christ. Man. Lord Jesus. <laughs> Lord Jesus. You think of it this way. How can a person go to hell believing in Jesus? They can. And those
those of you that like to fake it and act like you, the Lord knows them that are his. He knows. He knows those that are his. Ain't nobody fooling him at all. Nobody. Jesus. The Lord knows those that are his. Oh, God. It's just Jesus the Christ. It's just Jesus the Christ. Man. That's who it is. It's Jesus the Christ. Man, Lord Jesus. That revelation is the best revelation that a soul could ever get. Jesus the Christ. That's right. That's right. Did it, your professor? Did you talk to him? You didn't? i like to know who he was. Who he, what was he saying? Because I... I I really like to know. Maybe he is he saved? You don't know. Wasn't nobody before Christ. Yeah, he lying. He lying. I don't mind. To, you know, I like. You know what? I like to meet folk, folk like that. I, 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 you know, they don't have to be here. I come to the library. <laughs> I don't mind. I, I come to the library. I like to meet some of these teachers that's so full of mess. And I, I, I you know what? I really like to meet some of these preachers. Sometimes I do. Sometimes I do. I read. Y'all remember that time? <laughs> I went to the mall. I had the right, <laughs> had the right brothers with me. I ran into the mall. Oh, teacher lied. Oh, preacher lied. I went to the mall and confronted him. And he swear he didn't say that. Didn't he? I didn't say that. And the person that said he said it was standing right there with him. I, you talking about some lying dogs? There are some preachers that are lying dogs. When, just like uh, God said in Isaiah, there are dogs that can't even bark. And let me say it to all you preachers again. There are some dogs. I don't care whether you're offended or not, but there are some dogs in the pulpit. Let me tell you what a dog is. A dog is someone that's leading people to hell. And God called them dogs. That's what they are. So I don't care whether that hurts your feelings or not. It makes me no difference. They are dogs. They're out for themselves, for nothing else, and they refuse to tell you the whole truth. And them dogs going to be judged. That's, what they, that's why the Bible calls them dogs. Not only those that turn to their own vomit are dogs, but you got a bunch of them in the pulpit. And I don't mind preaching to God and telling you, and I'll tell you in a minute, if that preacher is saved or not, no, he ain't saved. She ain't saved. And I, I do it based on the word. Based on... You know why? Because, listen to me, there is no preacher at all that the Lord sent to pervert people. The, the devil does it, but the Lord doesn't told you about Satan and his ministers. But God do not do it. Let me say it again. There is absolutely no preacher that Jesus sends that's not preaching the whole truth. Jesus didn't send them. He did not send them. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers that do not teach and preach the old truth, he doesn't send them. They're idle. And you can say, you can tell them, all your reverence, all your whatever, you can tell them. The Lord didn't send them. The Lord do not do stuff like that. Not my God does. And he gave some apostles, prophets, pastors, evangelists, and teachers for what? For the perfecting of the saints. To bring you to a place of maturity for the work of his ministry. So all you preachers that you you go and get counsel from on old lying dogs, I tell you have to. I'm trying to the ones that's gone on to. Oh, they're going to pay for it. They're going to pay. they going to pay. Preachers going to pay for the way they manipulated people. Every one of them. Every one of them is gone. Every one of your favorite preachers. I don't care how far they can rail back. They can go back and touch the floor. <laughs> if they didn't preach the truth, they're going to pay for it. And I was sent here not by none of you all. 
I was sent here to tell people the truth. Whether it's you or whatever, I was sent here to tell folk the whole truth. If you want to believe the truth, get in that word. You want to believe a lie, stay out of the word. Stay in your emotion. But one day, you're going to stand and you're going to face my king. And my king is going to judge you by his words. That's right. So I'm not, I don't, it don't matter who vote me in, who vote me out. Baby, you can't vote me in. You can't vote me out. Gee, you know. <laughs> I don't have a mother's board. Oh, daddy, boy. I don't, you know, you, you know y'all laugh? I don't play that mess. All these religious churches, I don't care what you brought with you. If it ain't in the word, there's a reason why it wasn't in the word. He didn't use it. Now, you can believe whatever you want to believe. You can believe tonight, you, that bunny coming tonight if you want to. You can believe, you know, you can believe in Santa Claus if you want to. That's, that's your prerogative. You can believe, you know, St. Nick going to come down the chimney. My question, do you have a chimney? If you ain't got no chimney, what are you doing in your house? Because <laughs> that was true, he come down the chimney. You know, when I got saved, one of the first things I did at the ruins is we got up and said, there ain't no Santa Claus. The whole place got quiet. It's like you curse God. I'm telling you, the whole place got quiet. Got quiet, folks. The whole, I'm sitting, all, all them religious folk got quiet. Huh? And then folks start telling us, well, y'all shouldn't have said that around the children. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. If you can lie around them, why can't I tell the truth? But see, when you emotional, when you ain't saved, when you religious, you go for that mess. You go, for, that's what you do. You, but when you get saved, and that's why I'm not trying to deal with none of you religious folk in you. Matter of fact, I'm standing up against all of you that's religious. Oh, we ain't together. I'm against you. The Lord and I, we against, We tell you to your face, we are against you. You can call me your enemy, fine. As long as I ain't here, we're going to tell you the truth. You need deliverance. You need to be saved. And when you don't, if you have a problem with the truth, your heart ain't right. How can you be right, converted, when you don't like the truth? No. Uh, you ain't fooling me. You might fool yourself, but you ain't fooling Apostle Bush. I done read too much of this word here. I know you ain't right. So therefore, I'm going to heaven. And I know where you're going. Any question based on what I see? Throw it out there right now. Anything. The Bible said be ready to answer anybody that be, for your faith. That's what my faith is. That's what I believe. I believe, therefore, any question before you leave here? I'm just trying to get y'all to be honest. Because some of y'all going to tap in. <laughs> some of y'all some of y'all religious folk, you know, that's what, preachers do the same thing. They don't talk about righteous pre preachers in their face. They get behind their back. They have their club meetings. That's what the Pharisees did. The Pharisees, they didn't say I didn't open. It is expedient that Jesus died. They got their group together. All you Pharisees, we're going to have a meeting. Hey, boys, come on to my club. <laughs> and the conversation was about Jesus. And you know what Jesus did? He went on. He knew they was having their meetings. That's right. And they didn't even have a harvest table. <laughs> they didn't even have a harvest table, folks. They, they met in their little caves or whatever, you know what I mean? People, it's a mess, boy. It's a racket. That's why I thank the Lord for the truth. Come on. We're going to pray. We're going to pray, and we're going to bless the Lord and let y'all go home, and hopefully y'all stay in the truth, all right? Lord Jesus, we lift up these tithes and offerings. By faith, we place it in your hands to be used for your purpose and your glory. And even as we have sold, like your son Isaac sold, and reap a hundredfold, Lord, you still blessing your people. Thank you, Jesus, most of all for the truth. We can read it for ourselves. And Lord, people have a place to come to where they can hear the whole truth. 
They don't have to get caught up in their traditions, what they've been taught that's not right. They can get caught up in nothing but your whole truth and expect for you to work in their lives. We thank you, Lord. We honor you. In your name we pray and we thank you. Amen. All right. All right, we're going we're gonna to praise the Lord. We're going to bless the Lord for the truth. We're going to magnify Jesus for the <laughs> I'm going home with the truth. Lord Jesus. Oh God. Mm. Thank you, Lord, for the truth. Thank you for the truth, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Trusty Weaver, he's a lie. Y'all come on, choir. Oh, he's a lie. That's why you shouldn't be afraid, intimidated, or scared. He's alive. He's just alive and got the last word. Lord Jesus, he is alive, folks. Mm. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for the water, too. Jesus, my Jesus is a that's right. He is alive all the way. Jesus is alive. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for the truth. Watches over us, take care of us, bless us, give us strength, give us food to eat, bless our children. Just amazing. We got children, got jobs now. Ain't that something? The Lord bless them. I hope y'all understand who blessed y'all. It was the Lord that blessed you with that job. That's right. He's putting you in a position to prosper. That's what he's putting you in a position to do. The Lord Jesus Christ, it's him. My words, says God, will not return for it. That's right. It's just the Lord, folks. That's right. I ain't backing down, taking down from nobody else's God. I'm going to stand on my God. I'm going to stand on my God. And my God is Jesus the Christ and God the Father. But I'm going to Jesus first because that's our God. The God like it this way. And I like pleasing God. As much as I can, I want to please God. I want to please God so I talk about Jesus. And I don't get out there like some folk do and get religious. I can't think that way. Get saved. You come on up, sis. Come on up, sis. Get saved. My advice is get saved. Get saved because singing the choir will not, a song will not get you there. But being saved, dancing won't get you there. Being saved will, will get you to heaven. All right? Will get you to heaven. And those of you that are saved, I know you like what I'm saying. Yes. Those of you that are not, you can't stand it. You're tired and messed up. I'm talking about forever. Folks, somewhere you go, you and I are going to be somewhere forever. 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 So I, I done traded my life in. <laughs> I traded my life for Jesus. That's right. So I ain't looking for nothing else new. Y'all ready? Yes. And Jesus was alive. Yes. Let's go. She's glory. Jesus. The lamb that was slain, he's alive. Forever he shall reign, he's alive. They crucified him at Calvary, but he rose in victory. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. Oh yeah. Jesus is alive. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. Oh yeah. The lamb that was slain. 
Family picnic will be Monday, September 3rd. 
we will have the 70 Cinema, Game Truck, Monster Truck, Sports Area, and Dora Bouncy. The ministry will be adding new camera operators to the production department. If you are interested, you may contact the ministry. Prophecy books. Go ahead. Yeah. To the body, make sure you are driving the speed limit going through Hatzibah and in the construction zone, Windsor Spring Road from Tobacco Road to Highway 88. The police are out waiting, some on motorcycles. Proverbs 422, dress with wisdom. All other announcements can be viewed on the screen. All right, your prophecy books. Now, let me say this to you. When you turn in your prophecy books, nobody is supposed to look at those prophecy books but me. That's it. Prophet Lord has no business opening that book, looking into it at all. When you turn in your prophecy books, you turn them in, she take them, she bring them in um, to me. She, either her or Minister Wright bring them in to me. I look at them. I give them back to her. She give them back to you all. Once she give them back to you, if you look in there, if it says give, then what you do, you take it back to her and give it back to her so she can um, bring it back in me to me and uh, you'll give it. Now let me explain to you something about prophecy, okay? Everybody that get up and prophesy don't hear from the Lord. And that's why we don't do like these other ministries do where you walk in, you just start prophesying. Oh no, not here. You're going to be trained. You're going to be trained right. I, I don't care what these other ministries does. When you come in here, you're going to be trained right. And it's for your benefit because you will find out that the Holy Spirit is not the only one speaking. You'll find out the devil speaks to you too. And if you come up here and give a prophecy from the devil, you know what's going to happen here. Yes. That's why a prophecy has to be judged. And pretty soon we're going to go back through prophecy class so we can go back and show you all about how prophets are trained to prophesy. Not, they're not trained to give. We don't give them the words to prophesy. But there's things that you have to know about finding out whether the devil talking to you or whether that came from you or it came from the Lord. And if you haven't been trained, you absolutely do not know this. You do not know. You have to go through training in these last days. And in the book, when you read the book of Samuel, you talked about Samuel and Elijah. They had the school of prophets. So every ministry, not let me, these these days where people just jump up and prophesy and stuff like that, that's ignorance. You don't do that. You know why? A lot of folk was being governed by the devil out of their own flesh, and they said stuff that didn't come to pass. In other words, they did what Jeremiah said. They said stuff that wasn't right, that God didn't tell them to say, because I feel that. No, that's not the right way to prophesy. And do you, if you notice lately here, you notice how prophets have died down and crossed over? Even if you look on these ministry on TV. You don't hear too much about prophesying. You know why? The reason why, because they abuse it. Like the Corinthian church. The Lord, the Lord ain't going to speak to you unless you've been trained or mature enough to know who's talking to you. And here, we ain't having no mess. If you get up and say the Lord said something, and if the Lord said it, I will tell you. And if he didn't, I'm going to tell you too. So the school of prophets the purpose of it is so you won't be embarrassed, so you can learn how the Lord works, all right? You can, and if you don't know about the school of prophets, that shows right there how ignorant you are. If you don't know what the scripture talks about, about prophesying and about the method of prophesying, if you don't know that, that's a, your downfall right there. Y'all understand that? So if you know something, then you can follow the right way so you won't be deceived. So prophecy prophesying is a gift from the Lord and is sent to exalt or help the body. But you have to know that everything that comes to you, and if you think that everything you hear or dream about is from the Lord, you're going to be deceived. If you think all your dreams come from the Lord, you're going to be deceived. Because you're going to find out in the book of Ecclesiastes, it tells you about a lot of our dreams come based on trafficking, meaning this. It's what you done been through. 
If something happened to your life, you end up dreaming about it. So all your dreams don't come from the Lord. And I, Apostle Bush ain't no fool. You ain't going to tell me all your dreams come from the Lord. Now, you can tell me I don't believe it. It do not. I know some dreams I have are not from the Lord. I know that. And you got to be able to discern that. That's why it has to be judged. It has to be judged. And it can't be judged by people that don't know. It has to be judged by people that know what they're doing, all right? Because prophecy will mess up your lives, all right? So I want you to understand that everything we do here is for a reason. And whether you understand it, whether you know it or not, we still going to do it. You know why? Because it's the word of the Lord. And what we'll do, we explain to you why we do it and the way we do it because it's for safety. Like the scripture says, let everything be done decent and in order. And if you notice, you, it keeps down a whole lot of confusion and it keeps the devil out. Some folk get up and prophesy and say stuff that the Lord didn't tell them to say. That's why. And I'm going to tell you something. If you get in your flesh, it's easy to believe that stuff when it's not true. So here, back to the word again. We're going to judge it by the word, all right? So I want you all to understand that. Be well equipped. You're getting ready to go back out now. And if you're saved, you're in an army. The whole world, like God says, lies in wickedness. If you save, he saved you to help those that are not saved. That's why you're here. You're not here to get rich. You're here to help folk that are not saved. I hope you use that. Ask the Lord to guide you. And remember this, who has the last word, all right? And I'm going to have the last word. Can I have a hug? <laughs> I see you trying to hide. Come on here. I'm going to let you do it sometime, too, all right? All right, we love you, all right? But we want you all to go out and prosper, okay? And don't be deceived by this religious world. Don't be received by people that don't know about a crowd. Right there, that Bible there, that's what you follow. Not your friends. That's what you follow, that word. And I'm going to tell you something. I don't mind rebuking any of you that tries to rise up in here against this truth. I will put you in your place. I don't care who you are. I will put you in your place. Nobody's going to come here and say this ministry is leading people wrong based on their feelings. You better show me in the word. I'm going to cut you down like I cut the devil down. You know what? I don't play with the devil. I don't play with false Christians. I don't play with false preachers. I don't play with hypocritical leaders. If you're going to say something, you better make sure you got this word to back you up. If not, I'm going to do you just like Jesus did the Pharisees. I'm going to call you a viper and a snake. That's what I'm going to warn people about you based on the word, all right? I understand, whether you understand or not, I'm in a battle. And the battle is against the devil and wicked folk. In, this, in my case, the position I'm in, I'm fighting not only against the devil, but against false preachers. Preachers that lie and tell the truth. Or pe preachers that think they know the truth, but don't know the whole truth. So I want y'all to understand, see the Refugee Christian Center here? We're here to tell the truth. We're here for the Lord. So if you want to come and hear the truth, you can. If you want to, don't want to come, you don't have to come because we ain't begging nobody. But when you get here, you're going to hear the truth. And it's not going to be what you like or what you choose. It's going to be what the Lord tell me, and that's it. Whether you come here or not, it's up to you. But what goes on here or not, it's up to right here. Pastor Bush. And I'm going to keep y'all in the word. Those of you, I'm going to keep you educated. Most of you here, you know more than a lot of preachers here. Why? Because of the word inside of you. Stop being afraid. Use what you know. Tell the truth. And if these folk don't want to bow down to the truth, don't worry about it. Move on. Move on. The Lord will use you to tell the truth. You know what? Just because somebody got to turn around and call, that don't mean they know the truth. The Bible told us to study. And you got a whole lot of ignorant preachers haven't studied. And then you're going to try to tell somebody to study to know that. No, that ain't going to work. That ain't, I mean, you can do it. <laughs> you can try, but it ain't going to work. I'm going to come back at you with the word. That's what I'm supposed to do. Well, you're supposed to do the same thing. I'm not telling you to go out and very going to disrespect preachers. But let me tell you something. 
Preachers are supposed to know the truth. That's why the Lord called them. We just put, roll that screen down before y'all go and put Ephesians um, 4 and 11 back up there again. Preachers are supposed to know the truth. If you tell me you've been sent by the Lord, I'm not saying you know everything, but if you tell me you've been sent by the Lord, you're telling me there's a certain level of words you know. That's what you're telling me. And I'm going to hold you accountable for what you know. And he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, pastors and teachers for what? Wait a minute. How are you going to perfect the saints if you don't know? See, we got too many illiterate people in the pulpit that's trying to tell people that know what to do. That's why I thank God for the apostle I had. Apostle Lee, oh, he didn't back down from none of them. Like Paul said, I don't care who you are. Your position don't move me. It don't bother me at all. I'm just going to tell folk the truth. For perfecting of the saints, to bring y'all to a place of maturity, for the work of the ministry. And let me say something to y'all. This small crowd here would do more work than a $20,000 sanctuary that's doing half work. Don't y'all ever forget that. These sanctuaries that get in there and lie, come on TV and lie and tell folk the truth, don't you ever think the Lord is honoring them because of their size. The Lord don't honor no place because of their size. The Lord only honors a place because of their truth. Whether it's one or 10,000, he only honors place. That's why I ain't afraid of them Joel Steens. I ain't afraid of them folk. I ain't afraid of those of you that fall down to them. I'm not afraid of the why. Them Joel Steens and stuff like that. The only way the Lord honors them if they tell the whole truth. These liars and perverted preachers, they don't bother me. The crowd don't move me. Why? I know the Lord did not send them. And finally, let me tell all of you, and you preachers too, I don't have to ask you. I don't have to ask none of you. I'm truly confident in this word. And I, one thing I do know is this. When the Lord sends a preacher, they tell the whole truth. When you become an ambassador, you understand that you are under orders and you can't preach your sermons. You can't preach what you want. You preach what you hear. That's what folk don't like. And that's why the Lord told me in the last years, preach the truth. Be, preach the word. Be instant, in season, and out of season. When it's not popular, I'm going to preach it. And when it's popular, that's why you don't hear me preach, watch out for them dogs. Or the eagle stirs a nest. No, I'm going to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Those of you that want to hear it, fine. Those of you that don't, fine. Look here. Don't find. The truth is what's going to get us to heaven. Nothing, no crowd or nothing. So all of you, you look at them crowds on TV and think because they got 20, 30,000 people, they're going to heaven. Hmm. Let me tell you something. Nobody's going to heaven except by Jesus. And Jesus said, I want you to know I'm the way and I'm the truth. And then I'm the life. So I hope you remember that. This is an exhortation, a warning to watch out for these preachers and watch out for these folk that call themselves preachers that walk in their emotions and have no Bible to back them up. Watch out for them. And if, and let me tell you something. If you run into a preacher that say I'm telling the I'm telling a lie. Ask them to prove it. Tell them. They can come here. They can do just like that guy there. But you're going to tell the truth. You be ready. You be ready because, let me tell you something, Apostle Bush ain't bagging now. I ain't afraid. If you can show me where I'm not telling the truth, then what you do is this. Show me in the word, I'll repent. But you're going to have to show me in the Not based on what you've been trained or what you feelings or something like this. So I want you to understand, when you come here, you're going to get the truth. That's all you're going to get. If you don't want the truth, I wouldn't advise you to come here. I wouldn't advise because that's all you're going to get, all right? This gospel is not tailored to you. It's tailored from the Lord, all right? So when you go out, I pray to the Lord, you stand on the word, you're different. The Bible says you're supposed to be peculiar. You're not supposed to be like the world. You're supposed to be different. 
So I encourage you, don't let folk lie to you. Anybody come to you about your salvation, they should be able to show you in there. And it should be rightly divided. If not, you the fool. You are. You the fool for believing in a lie. All right? I'm going to tell you the whole truth. So if you be mad at me, I want you to know I still love you. So I pray to God, all of you, go out, have a blessed day, and know this. The Holy Spirit is telling people to tell. So y'all have a blessed evening, and we'll see y'all back here next time, and we're going to worship the Lord in the love y'all. We'll see you next time. Yes. Oh, you got your hand up. We'll see you next time. So long now. All right. Hey.